Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Global Reality. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. This is Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. And I'm here with you again for another broadcast. It's been a uh, considerably slow news week again as it was last week. So I've kind of done what I did last week is just wait until uh, I had enough things to talk about built up to justify doing another show. So here I am with you. So I've got some, uh, I got some very interesting things to talk about with you here on the show tonight. And uh, we'll be getting into all of them. Thank you again for being here with us. And, uh, again, we don't have sponsors or outside funding or anything, anything like that. And I gotta be honest with you. Um, you know, <laughs> I, uh, the amount of things that I'm able to uncover here and what I've been able to do, you know, going on 12 years being on air, um, with, you know, very little funding. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, honestly a miracle sometimes, but, uh, yeah, I've, I, 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 what I'm going to get into, I've got a lot of stuff to get into, but one, one of the, one of the things I'm going to get into here, particularly tonight, it's very important. Uh, and I just, I don't know. It just astounds me. You know, like I've talked about when you, uh, when you find that thing that you're supposed to be doing in life, it constantly reaffirms that to you over and over again. And, uh, it's happened to me again this week with, uh, some of this stuff that I found and got into, um, you know, I, I didn't really pay much attention to this. Well, I saw it cause you know, I, I do my, my daily news gathering and, uh, you know, I kept seeing these stories and thought it was odd and unusual and strange and sort of a mystery like everybody else. But it wasn't until I saw this, mo you know, sometimes that's what it takes. It takes one little thing for me to click with something else that I've already researched and already know about or something that's kind of in my wheelhouse for me to put two and two together on and go, aha. And, uh, and that's sort of happened here, but man, the news lately has just been, it's been really shitty and we're heading into another election cycle here and it's only going to get worse. So, uh, I'm going to be doing like I always do. And I always have around the time we start getting into election cycles, because I'm not going to, I don't, I never have, and I never will. I don't, I sit here. A lot of people do that. Every time there's an election, the majority of the shows just start dedicating everything to that. And I never do that. I'll, I'll sit up here and talk about shit. I've talked, I, I mean, I haven't done that. Thankfully I always got new topics, but I'll sit up here and talk about shit. I've already talked about a million times before I'll turn this into the fucking bullshit, you know, political left, right scam thing. But, um, a lot of these, man, a lot of the news stories, they've just been crap. And since when, I know you guys have seen this too, why on earth, I mean, so many things now that qualify as news is just so ridiculous to me. Why on earth, I'm not kidding you, I'll see four or five of these a day when I'm doing my news gathering that I do every day. Why the fuck on earth of the past couple of years have, like all this Dr. Pimple Popper and all this, why is that shit fucking news now? I, I don't get it. That's where we're at now. It's gotten that bad. Really? That's fucking news now. Popping fucking nasty ass zits and blackheads and video on the fucking seeing how gross the ooze is. that comes out. That's news. I'm not kidding you there yesterday. Uh, one of the news sites, I don't know which one it was, might have been Yahoo or one of those fucking ones, but it, there was literally there was five different fucking Dr. Pimple Popper fucking stories in one day. I, I just don't get it. I don't get how that fucking qualifies it as news. Fucking, that's disgusting. Nobody wants to see that shit. And if you do want to see it, you're fucked. You need to seriously re-examine your life if you're into watching fucking videos of people popping fucking... Do these people know how to wash? 
Jesus Christ. If you got shit like that with stuff coming out of it, you need to learn how to wash. Wash your fucking stank ass. God damn, it's gross. Anyway, it's some of this, I mean, ugh. I mean, I can almost, you know, I can almost, you know, I get tired of seeing shit about the Kardashians and stuff too, but goddamn, the Kardashians are more newsworthy than fucking nasty zits and blackheads being popped and, you know, each one trying to one-up the other two. Oh, here's here's another gross, look at this one, it's got extra nasty ooze coming. I mean, it's just fucking gross, man. It's not even funny. But I had, uh, as I guess a lot of people now, I'd heard about this, uh, all these mysterious deaths going on in the Dominican Republic. And uh, last night I saw a story that on it that made me have that, what I was talking about a minute ago, that sort of aha moment where it clicks with something in my wheelhouse. Because... Uh, as you know, one of the things that I've studied for many years in my wor- my research and my work is specifically stuff pertaining to uh, the CIA and uh, and black ops and uh, CIA sanctioned assassinations, whether it be you know coup d'etats or stuff like that. And uh, there continues to be more and more stories coming out about these deaths that have happened in the last year of the Dominican Republic. And uh, the one thing I started to notice, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a worldwide travel destination. People from all over the world go there. But it started to be, red flags started to go off for me when I started noticing that all of these cases have all been Americans. Every single one of them. There hasn't been anybody from any other country yet that this has happened to. Specifically, like, this is happening only to Americans. So that made me think that, you know, something was going on where people are being targeted here. Uh, But when this story came out last night, man, I jumped all over this because it was right in my wheelhouse. Because I've studied a lot of these CIA uh, assassination things stuff like where because uh, you know i i first got on to studying this stuff i guess probably back when i was studying the kennedy assassination stuff a long time ago because i was reading about the different stuff they the cia wanted to use against castro they wanted to use all these different uh you know different types of things uh, untraceable stuff and and of course a lot of people a lot of you know about the the uh, CIA ice dart gun, which came out during congressional testimony in like 1975, I think. And, um, yeah, they used different, I wanted to know what they, you know, what they use because these different toxins and different things uh, that they could use in these ice dart guns where they shoot you with this ice dart and then it melts, and then the toxin denatures, and then it just looks like natural causes. They make it, it looks like a heart attack. And I started noticing that some of these deaths, a lot of them had symptoms to me that seemed like some kind of poisoning. And they also, a lot of them were heart attacks. I mean, one of the cases was a couple. I don't know if they were on their honeymoon. I can't remember all the details. I think they were on their honeymoon. But this couple were on their honeymoon in the Dominican Republic or something. They they both died. And it was determined natural causes, and it was determined that they both had simul- simultaneous heart attacks. Now, I don't have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the, you know, the, the chances and odds, I mean, it's, it might as well be impossible. That's, uh, the, the odds are just astronomical. That two people would die of natural causes in the exact same way at the exact same time. That was those are all were all big red flags for me. That's when I started going, okay, something else is going on here. But when I saw this story last night, that's when I went, okay, I know what this is now. A man who died in Dominican Republic reportedly had green foam coming out of his mouth. Now, this immediately sent up red flags for me because 
there's only a very few things that you could narrow that down to that would cause someone to foam green and then kill over and die. Now, one of them is strychnine, but here's the thing. Strychnine is going to show up in a toxicology test. Strychnine is going to show up when you're doing an autopsy. It says, an Arizona man claims his father who died while vacationing in the Dominican Republic last June had something green foaming from his mouth when he died. Mark Hulbert Jr. told Arizona family last Saturday that his father, 62-year-old Mark Hulbert Sr., and his wife were in Punta Cana when both became sick the night before Hulbert Sr. passed away. She woke up and he didn't. She told me that as she found him that he had something green coming from his mouth. It was something that came way out of left field. It's not something any of us thought was going to happen. Hulbert Jr. said his father was healthy before he died, but is unsure whether Hulbert Sr.'s death was related to the latest string of deaths that have taken place across the Caribbean island. Hulbert Sr.'s cause of death was officially listed as a heart attack, although his son is now suspicious. Yeah, and the other suspicious thing is they're claiming all their toxicology machines on the whole fucking island all went fucking tits up and quit working all at the same time. So I'm saying, uh-uh, you ain't selling me on that. And they've been, the officials there have been pushing relatives to have the bodies cremated instantly or, you know, on site. Those are all somebody's, this is, I, I, you know, I don't know what, to, as far as who's doing this, I can't tell you. I don't know. But I can tell you that I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here, especially after reading this green foam thing, because I've read about this kind of stuff before. And uh, there's a particular, the CIA loves this kind of stuff. They love, they, they, love being able to use plant-based toxins and poisons to eliminate people that are undetectable in an autopsy, undetectable in a random or a, um, I'm sorry, not a random, but a undetectable in a standard toxicology screen. And uh, so I made a post on uh, and put it on Facebook last night talking about this. And I'll just read you the post that I put on Facebook last night. It says, this shit is crazy. They need to pay an honest to God researcher like me to crack the case, which, of course, I believe I already have. This is the work of an anti-American serial killer. All the deaths and illnesses have been strictly Americans. I believe these people have been poisoned with gelsamine. Now, I've, now I've, I've researched this before. Gelsamine, another one uh, that uh, I, I sort of refer to these sometimes as like... Uh, you know, widow maker type thing. Well, you know, there's there's a lot of these where w women have abusive husbands and they, you know, castor beans are another one because you can, I think, was it strychnine or something like that? But gelsamine is an interesting one because, as I said in this Facebook post, Chemically, it's very close to strychnine. And strychnine will cause you to foam at the mouth green if it's ingested. But gelsamine specifically does. It has an alkali in it that comes from gelsium plants, which are basically um, jasmine, the jasmine flower. And you, you can synthesize the alkalis out of that, and it can be used, I believe this is what the CIA used in their iStart guns, it can be used to create a toxin that is completely undetectable in a standard toxicology screen and also in, uh, in an autopsy. And there's all kinds of studies you can go read up about gelsium plants there's been a lot of cases where people have suspected that they were poisoned, but um, it's such a it's such a complex chemical structure when it's 
synthesized down from the flower to make a poison out of that like I said, the random toxic the toxicology you just can't look for. You aren't gonna find this unless you're specifically testing uh urine and blood specifically for in looking for this stuff. You're just not gonna find it because and that's why they love it. That's why the CIA loves it. Because it's a great assassination thing because you can make it you know, it makes it look like a heart attack, makes it look like natural causes. But it isn't. The, the, the example I made in the Facebook post I talked about was uh, from Breaking Bad. If you've ever seen Breaking Bad, there's uh, Walter White. He was trying to get Jesse to go back and cook meth with him and stuff, and he poisoned that kid. And he thought it was ricin. They couldn't figure out what it was because it wasn't detectable. They couldn't figure out what it was, and it ended up being the flower lily of the valley and Walt had uh, synthesized it down and poisoned that kid with it. And uh, that something's going on here. I, you know, I don't know. Again, I can only speculate seeing that this is only happening to Americans. Somebody's strictly, somebody is strictly targeting Americans for what reason and what purpose. I don't know. I don't really have any ideas. I, I couldn't tell. I mean, I know that as far as the Dominican Republic goes, I know that that we've installed puppet dictators down there for years. Maybe there's some kind of, um, I mean, I haven't had time to look into this. Maybe one of y'all out there can have time to look at this. Uh, I would start by looking and seeing if there's any sort of, um, you know, anything going on with the current Trump administration and the Dominican Republic, any kind of trade thing going on. You know, any sort of reason are they, you know, is there any sort of reason why Somebody, I don't believe that the CIA is involved in this, but listen, uh, there's no question. Uh, the feds can't figure out what this is. And listen, if you're li if the FBI and the, the alphabet agencies that monitor my broadcast are listening, y'all need to turn your ears on right now to get a pen and write this down. Gelsamine, G E L S E M I N E. It's an alkali taken from. The jasmine flower, and guess what? That jasmine flower that gelsamine comes from just happens to be an indigenous plant to the Dominican Republic. Now, it's found in Asia. It's found in other parts of North America. But it is specifically found in the Dominican Republic. And there are reports of uh, chemical smells. A lot of these people uh, drink out of the mini bar. This is this is this is a target. It's, there's either a serial killer here, or there's something bigger than this than that going on. But this is not being done by some random. I mean, this has been done by a pro. This is like a Walter White, you know, mad genius, crazy, insane, maniacal motherfucker here. This is done by somebody that has extensive knowledge of different genus of, of plants toxicology, how much you got to have, how much you got to have to put in, and the ability, again, to make it seem, I mean, it could just be random. It could just be somebody that just hates Americans and just wants to kill people, some sick, sadistic, crazy. It could be as simple as that. But nobody's looking for this yet. When I, and I Again, I didn't have any clues until I saw the, the green, heard about the green foam thing, and that's when I re immediately I said, oh, shit, I know what this is. Uh, and then, you know, to find out that that specific flower that you synthesize gelsamine from happens to be indigenous to the to Dominican Republic, man, where there's smoke, there's fire. And uh, not long after I would posted this last night, I actually got contacted by a listener that uh, told me that, that one of their family members is one of the victims that died from this. I can't tell you any more than that because they asked me not to say, not to give out their identity or any details or anything. So that's all I can tell you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I informed this person that you know, look, you need because and what was what I thought was interesting too is that uh, they said that their family member was also cremated and. I read in another one of these articles that the locals and the, the uh, officials in the Dominican Republic are one of the family members said that they were 
basically bullied by one of the officials into having their that's what they're trying to do they're trying to they're trying to eliminate all the evidence because they don't want anything left behind now if the officials here's the thing if the if the government officials are ha- are encouraging people to have their relatives cremated they're either in on it or they know that this is that they've got a serial killer on their hands and they don't want it getting out and they're trying to keep a lid on it one of it's one of the toast two things um but i told this person that contacted me that they needed to you know try and get a because they keep you know they'll keep stuff on file they need to try and get an independent analysis of their relatives uh, you know, independent toxicology report done that specifically looks for gelsamine. Unless you're specific, even in, even oftentimes, unless you're, I think now it's gotten better, but in the past it was very, it's very difficult. It's such a complex toxin. The chemical nature of it's very, very, very complex. That's, that's what I'm saying. And this is, this is a mad, crazy, this is either somebody, a mad, crazy genius killer person or this is somebody that works in the intelligence community and this is being done for political reasons or you know I, don't, I it's all theory it's all guesses but i'm telling you right now it's not a theory or a guess i'll put money on it that and they're you know they're not even nobody's even looking at this man god damn that's what i'm telling you here I, I'm 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 pretty positive, folks, that I've cracked and done what the what the FBI and the rest of these fucking people haven't done yet. Somebody needs to put my ass on the payroll, man. How many how many times do I do this? I crack shit all the time. I'm telling you right now, I'll put money on this. That's what this is. Because in all again, in all these cases, they're they're all saying natural causes. All these people are you know we're healthy people. This is, uh, I mean, this is just insane. Having known what I know now, I would have fought tooth and nail to have his remains brought back here and had an autopsy done here in America. Herbert Sr.'s death is one of several puzzling incidents. See, all these, every one of these people, they're being encouraged to have not, to not even allow them to bring their body back. They're encouraged to have them fucking cremated right there. That's a red flag. They either, the, the officials in, in, in the Dominican Republic either know they're either doing this or they know somebody that is and they're trying to keep a lid on it. Herbert Sr.'s death is one of several puzzling incidents to have occurred in Punta Cana over the past several months. Yvette Monique Sport of Glenside, Pennsylvania died on June 23, 2018 after allegedly drinking from the mini bar at the Bahia Principe Hotel. Her fiancé reportedly tried to wake her up and found that she was unresponsive. Officials later determined that Sport died of a heart attack, although Sport's sister insisted she was healthy prior to her passing. One month later, on July 14, 2018, David Harrison of Charles County, Maryland, died after complaining of being sick one night while staying at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Punta Cana. A doctor had purportedly taken 25 minutes to provide treatment and arrived too late to save the victim. Hmm. Authorities concluded shortly after Harrison died of a heart attack and pulmonary edema. On April 14, 2018, Robert Wallace of Turlock, California, died at the same resort as Harrison. Wallace's niece told Fox News that he fell sick almost immediately after having a scotch from his room's mini bar. The family has yet to learn Wallace's official cause of death. That same month, nearly 50 members of a Jimmy Buffett fan club got sick after lounging by a pool at the Hotel Real Palace Macau. One member told KFOR that he lost 14 pounds due to his illness which he says occurred not too long after he had a drink from a swim-up bar. Some group members also allegedly tested positive for salmonella. Last month, Jerry Martin of Plant City, Florida, told WTVT that he too became sick after swimming up at a pool in Punta Cana. Since returning to the U.S., he's reportedly been to the emergency room five times. On June 9th, several high school graduates from Oklahoma became violently ill after eating at a Japanese restaurant at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Six members of the group were taken to the hospital, hooked up to IVs, and given antibiotics and anti-nausea medicine. The string of incidents have left Dominican authorities scrambling to quell fears over safety concerns. Of the uh, yeah, they don't want to get out that they got a fucking serial killer over there. That's what they're. That's why they're trying to. They're trying to cover this up. So they're. They're just. 
they're making the situation worse than it already is. You know, because on top of the fact that you've got somebody that's intentionally poisoning this, they're trying to scramble and play damage control because they don't want their tourism money to be affected. But, uh, Yeah, here's an article. Confirmation of gelsium poisoning by targeted analysis of toxic gelsium alkaloids in urine. Gelsium plants are highly poisonous, but toxicological evaluation of suspected poisoning cases is hampered by the chemical complexity of gelsium toxins involved. A novel liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry spectrometry protocol was optimized for the collective detection of gelsamine and related alkaloids from gelsium elegans. The screening protocol was applied to the clinical investigation of unexplained intoxications following the ingestion of seemingly non-toxic herbs. And three clusters of toxicological emergencies ranging from severe dizziness to respiratory failure, gelsium mistaken for various look-alike therapeutic herbs, was suspected to be the hidden cause of poisoning. Nine cases of gelsium poisonings were thus ascertained by the diagnostic urine alkaloid profiles. Gelsamine was sustained as the main urinary marker of gelsium exposure. Gelsium is a small genus of three species distributed in Southeast Asia, and the two other species are native to North America. More than 50 alkaloids with diverse chemical structures and biological activities have been isolated from these plants. The individual alkaloids present account for the variable toxicity observed between different local species, different parts of the plant, and different season of harvest. The alkaloids from G. sempervirenus have been well characterized with gelsamine being the most abundant and gelsimacine being the most toxic. A single case of pediatric poisoning by accidental ingestion of flowers has been reported. G. elegans, which is known as Gaumen, which means lethal kiss in China, has been used as traditional medicine for the treatment of pain, spasticity, and skin ulcers. However, the potent toxicity restricts its use to, tro- to topical application only. In Hong Kong and other parts of China, the lethal plant has been notoriously used in committing suicide and homicide because it's undetectable. Yeah, that's another thing I've yeah that I've read about before. People use it to commit suicide, so then they uh, you know people just think they died of natural causes, and their family members don't have to live with thinking they killed themselves. In addition, the gelsium plant grows as a twinning vine, and it may interweave with other edible plants, leading to an inadvertent consumption. That could be the case too. They maybe they're possibly mixing in. I don't know, mixing in the flowers. I mean, that's a possibility. This really seems intentional. I don't think this is, I don't think any of this is accidental. Maybe they're mixing this stuff in drinks. I don't know, but that wouldn't make sense that they, that people are drinking bottles out of the mini bar. Somebody's, you know, this is somebody, if, if, if people are getting poisoned from stuff in the mini bar and the rooms are having smell that smell like chemicals have been sprayed in there, then this is somebody who has master keys to the hotel rooms which is what led me to believe that we've got a serial killer on our hands they need to go they, i mean this they, that's the thing something something's up with this typical symptoms of intoxication include rapid onset dizziness nausea vomiting blurred vision limb paralysis breathing difficulty coma and convulsion and severe poisoning life-threatening respiratory depression would lead to death the alkaloids have also been studied extensively. The chemical diversity of the main gelsium alkaloids, the most abundant alkaloid is calmine, which showed mild toxicity compared to gelsamine. However, the latter isolated alkaloid, gelsinosine, proved to be the most toxic. Indeed, the fatal action of gelsinine by respiratory inhibition in ex- experimental animals is analogous to that 
of gel myosin, although the exact mechanism of their action appears controversial. Despite numerous phytochemical studies on the gelsium species, very limited information is available on the analysis of, of gelsium toxins in biological samples. A high-performance liquid chromatography method for the separation of gelsamine, calamine, and gelsinosine has been described, but its application was restricted to the quality control of pharmaceutical extract from G. elegans. Gas chromatography mass spectrometry has been used to confirm gelsamine in the gastric content of a post-mortem case of poisoning, but the sensitivity would be insufficient for urinary toxin detection. Therefore, this study explores a liquid chromatography tandem MS method targeting the major alkaloids from G. elegans. This new method has been applied to studies of urine samples from clinical cases of suspected poisonings by the dangerous plant. Gelsamine was purchased from Sigma, St. Louis, Missouri. Stock solution of gelsamine was prepared by dissolving 10 milligrams of the compound in 70% acetona trial. Fresh plant of G. elegans include leaves and stems which were collected from Taipo region, countryside of Hong Kong in the autumn and was authenticated by a qualified herbalist. The air-dried reference plant had been stored at ambient temperature for less than 18 months before analysis. The commercial available solvent extraction tubes, Toxi Tube A, were obtained from Vary in Lake Forest, California. The extraction tubes contained a solvent mixture from dichloromethane and dichlorothane and buffer salts of sodium carbonate and bicarbonate to give a pH of around 9 for urine samples. Between March 2007 and February 2008, the laboratory received toxicological referrals of three unrelated clusters of suspected gelsium poisoning from local hospitals. The first episode involved a couple. Uh, the two other two episodes involved two families of four members. All patients took self-prepared decoctions of different therapeutic herbs known to cause acute toxicity. However, preliminary inspection of residual herbal materials was suggestive of gelsamine involvement. All patients recovered following medical treatment, but prolonged intensive care was required for case one, who exhibited life-threatening toxidrome. Urine samples were collected promptly from each patient. However, no urine sample was available from case two, who was discharged after a quick recovery. The residual raw plant related to the first episode, the dried plant material and residual decoction linked to the second episode and the leftover decoction from the third episode were also submitted for analysis. So this is, goes on and on. This is a long study of this. But, uh, yeah, this is it's very difficult to detect. This, it's, I mean, if you, <laughs> listen, I mean, if you're, there's really nothing better than this. There's really nothing better. If you were trying to kill people and you wanted it to be undetectable in an autopsy and undetectable in a random in a regular toxicology screen screening or you want to commit suicide or kill your husband or or, or wife or something i mean <laughs> this would be the way to do it but you know trying to say that all these people you know that drank from a mini bar or you know whatever else all just you know a lot of them being in good healthy shape just randomly died that's that's the thing about it it makes it look like nat like natural causes and of course now you know we have we, the technology's way better now we have the ability to detect these things more now but it's not something that it's not something that's it's commonly looked for nobody looks for this when they do a post-mortem examination there you know this is not something that's on the list of things that, that people look for so when they see that the person, you know, died from a heart attack, they just call it natural causes. Because there's nothing in that shows up in a toxicology screening that's going to indicate that that's this plant. And that's because of how complex the molecular structure of this alkaloid is when you synthesize it down out of the uh, jasmine plant. So, um, 
again, hey, you know, alphabet agencies, you guys are listening, you know, right, you need to look into this. Hopefully the person that contacted me that had a family member die, hopefully, I mean, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Hopefully they can get an independent toxicology screen done. Uh, cause it, and if they do, and we find out that's what this is, and I was right about this, um, you know, I, uh, hopefully we can keep other people from, from dying. You know, I understand, like I, I told this person, look, I understand this is not going to bring your family member back. You know, I get it. I've had family members die too. And, but you know, to, if we can, if we can avoid some other people from getting hurt or killed with this and we can get to the bottom of this, then, you know, that's all that matters. But like I said, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really know what to think of this at first until I saw the stuff about the green foam. Here's another story about it. at least nine tourists have died in the tropical paradise of the Dominican Republic over the past year, sparking fears that illegally sold alcohol is finding its way into hotel mini bars. Yeah, you know, when I first heard that too, Listen, that's a that's a widespread thing, but it's not going to cause green foaming at the mouth. It's just not. That hey, that's a common thing though. That's why I won't even I won't drink alcohol. Uh, I mean, I don't drink any more much anyway. But if I do, I won't drink. I don't drink alcohol, dude. You wouldn't believe they did. There was a couple of years ago they did a thing, which a random thing here, just just in Dallas. Not even I don't even know how what what anywhere else. There was like 20 bars and pl- places got busted here in Dallas because they came in and did screening. A lot of places do this and have been doing this for a long time. You should not drink alcohol at bars and places and stuff anymore, folks, because a lot of these places are, you know, they're trying to say the biggest thing if you own a restaurant or bar, man, food costs and, you know, and all that stuff is what is the killer. And a lot of these places are putting fucking rubbing alcohol. They're putting fucking rubbing alcohol and mixing it like they have, like, a, say they have a bottle of vodka that's like quarter left. They'll put rubbing alcohol in that shit. And so I've been to places before where I know for a fact that the shit that I got, I'm pretty sure I probably drank rubbing alcohol before. I'm, I'm sure most of you all probably have too. Uh, have you ever been to a bar? And gotten a couple of drinks or two or three drinks, had you know had enough drinks to where you should be good and buzz, but you never get a buzz at all. You just getting up, getting a headache or getting sick or something. That's that's probably what it is. But again, you know, I don't doubt that's probably going on down there in the Dominican Republic. It goes on everywhere, but it wouldn't be causing these symptoms. That's uh, you know. It's just not going to do it. Joseph Allen is the most recent victim of the mysterious spike in fatalities. He was found dead in his hotel room at the Terra Linda Hotel in Sosua on June 13th. The 55-year-old sister, Jamie Reed, told ABC that he died while he was on the trip to the beautiful Caribbean island to celebrate a friend's birthday. Mr. Allen told his traveling companions that he felt unwell while swimming in the hotel's pool and went up to his room to rest. A similar unexplained death the previous week that of 53-year-old Layla Cox has been described as an isolated incident. None of these are isolated incidents by the Republic's tourism minister, Francisco Javier Garcia. Again, these guys, see, there's a cover-up going on here from the top. Because if word gets out they got a serial killer, man, their fucking tourism is going to dry up overnight. And as well it should. Cynthia Day, Miranda Shopwarner, and Nathaniel Holmes all died in May. Robert Bell Wallace and John Cochran or Kokorin both died in April, and David Harrison and Yvette Monique Sport both died in as yet unexplained circumstances last summer. Meanwhile, a group of U.S. teenagers visiting the Dominican Republic all fell ill earlier this month in a suspected poisoning incident. Liz McLaughlin, whose daughter Libby was one of seven teenagers who were taken ill, said parents have no idea what's going on. We just don't know what's happening. Is it the water? Is it the ice? Is it the food? Is it the food handling? Is it the pesticides? 
Former FBI Deputy Assistant Director Danny Colson says, "Danny Colson wasn't that the wasn't that the F, wasn't Col, Agent Colson the guy in the Avengers? Remember? Says he finds the spate of fatality suspicious. He told Fox News it doesn't make much sense. This thing doesn't pass the smell test. These people need to have these people didn't have simultaneous heart attacks. There needs to be a major investigation. Hey, Agent Colson, look into the gelsamine." You guys need to look into this, man. How the fuck have I figured this out? You guys fucking have it, man. You guys get paid fucking millions of dollars. I, I've made, I've gotten $75 in all month this month, man. This is what I'm saying. This is why we got to have people fucking supporting my work. I'm, I'm over here cracking shit. The goddamn FBI ain't even figuring out. I'm telling you right now, I'll put any amount of money on it. This is gelsamine poisoning. I guarantee you that's what this is. And it didn't come to light to me until I heard about the green foaming at the mouth stuff because I've heard about that before. Because again, I've researched these these CIA kill methods. Man, you want a crazy movie? It wasn't that great of a movie, but I think I've talked about it before. But it shows a lot of these methods. It's called uh, uh, Killer Elite. I think it's on Netflix right now. It has Robert De Niro and Jason Statham in it. Watch that move, dude. That movie, fucking wigged me the fuck out when I first saw it because I could not believe I mean it shows you know like I said I've been studying this stuff for years man I don't I don't know of another film I can't tell you another film that shows the way the CIA and and covert operators and stuff do these kill methods to make them look like accidents and stuff assassination thing. oh man yeah, Killer Elite. If you haven't seen that movie, watch that. Because that's got, I, I, I mean, I was just sitting there. It almost was making my stomach hurt because I was like, man, this is just too real. You know, this is this is how they do it. They've been doing it for years. Make it look like suicides and everything else. Two other American tourists, Kaylin Null and Tom Schwander, 33, also suffered sudden and unexplained illnesses while on holiday in the Dominican Republic, which they say may have been caused by by nearby pesticide use. Well, that could be how they're delivering this stuff. Is they're mixing this stuff in with what they say is, you know, pesticides or bug spray or whatever. And they're, they're mixing this stuff. Somebody's mixing this stuff in undetected. If that's the case, then you wouldn't have to have somebody that uh, had access to all the rooms. You understand what I'm saying? This could just be somebody that I would go investigate. Number one, I would investigate wherever the, uh, hey, alphabet agency, get your pen out, write this shit down. I would go investigate whoever imports the alcohol into the country. There's got to be one place where it all comes in, then it all feeds out and gets distributed out to the, to the hotels and resorts and all that stuff there. I would investigate that, and I would go investigate who's providing the pesticides and stuff, because that, that, that would be a great undetectable way to do it. If you mixed in the gelsamine in uh, large enough quantities with the standard pesticides that everybody's getting, then you would have that, because that would explain why it's happening at all these different places there, and why they were smelling this stuff in rooms, because then, you know, they're spraying that stuff probably at the pools, they're playing, spraying that stuff outside by the patios, all in the rooms. Miss Knoll told CNN that they both suffered severe stomach cramps, blood in their stools, dizziness, blurred vision, shortness of breath. There it is. See? Stomach cramps, blood in their stool, dizziness, blurred vision, shortness of breath after walking in the night and noticing an intense chemical smell in their room. Boom. What did it just say when I was reading that scientific report just a second ago? Rapid onset dizziness, nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, limb paralysis, breathing difficulty. That's all those that's all the symptoms right there, folks, from gelsamine poisoning, right there. Y'all watch. Y'all watch y'all watch what I say. Y'all watch what I y'all watch what I say. I'm gonna end up fucking I'm gonna be end up being the one who fucking cracks this thing. Because this is what I do, man. This is my job, you know? I research it. This is my life. I don't do anything else. This is what I do. 
They cut short their stay and asked for a refund. Miss Knoll wrote about the strange deaths on her Facebook page. There's something going on. What happened to us may be related to what happened to them. This was the hotel that sprayed our room with pesticides. This cannot be a co- 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 coincidence. Honestly, there's something deeper going on with a chemical, so I believe that resort needs to be investigated if they are knowingly harming people. Well, again, it may not, again, it may not even be the hotel. It could be, but if they're having a chemical smell, and again, this is happening at multiple different resorts, I would go and find out who's providing the pesticide to these resorts on the island and go investigate them. You know, I mean, again, this it, it could this could be. I don't believe this is being done. It could be. I mean, it's, anything's possible. I don't believe this is being done by the CIA or by uh, a government organization or anything. But somebody is definitely specifically targeting targeting Americans because uh, they're the only cases of people that this has happened to so so far have been Americans. In the most widespread incident to date, 47 tourists attending a concert by American singer Jimmy Buffett became violently ill with some taking over two months to recover. Another American tourist, Tammy Lawrence Daly, 51, says she was beaten, choked, and left for dead by someone she believes was a hotel employee when staying at the plush all-inclusive resort. Oh, shit. Although a staff member's cap and mop handle were both smeared with Miss Lawrence Daly's blood were found nearby. The crime remains unsolved. Duh, fuck. We got a serial killer on our hands here. And they're an employee. And the fucking locals ain't doing dick all about it because they don't want to cause a fucking scare and get pe- and cut down their fucking, and have their, their whole economy is based around tourism there. If they don't got that, they don't got shit. Man, that's fucking crazy. I didn't know about somebody being choked and left for death. Yeah, somebody's targeting Americans on this deal. And I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to jump to any conclusions and say this is because of Trump or anything, but, you know, and I haven't had, like I said, I haven't had time to look into this, but I would look into seeing if there's anything specific that the Trump administration has done since he's been in office that would be detrimental to the Dominican Republic. And, you know, we've installed public dictators there for years. And is there something else going on? Well, let me see. I mean, let's, let, 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 fuck it. Let's do a little, let's do a, a, some on-air fucking research right here, right now. Let's see. Let's look up. I don't ever do this. I'm going to do this right now. Bear with me here. Here is a story from January 2019. It says... Trump may push Dominican Republic out of free trade pack. Oh, shit. How did I... <laughs> See what I'm saying? I didn't even fucking look this up, dude. I said it's probably got something to do with trade or something. See? Let's read this. Uh, amid the hopes of some Dominican officials and business leaders to revise the United States Central America Dominican Republic Free Trade Agreement, CAFTA DR, to reap additional advantages from the pack, it's now come to light that the Donald Trump administration has threatened... Dominican Republic's permanence in the CAFTA DR. Fucking A. Motherfucker. Agriculture Minister Osmar Benitez has recently said that Dominican Republic was in the process of requesting a review of the pact and already counted with President Danilo Medina's authorization, but on Wednesday, Deputy Farid Rafael cautioned of Trump's Dominican Republic on the intentions of to push Dominican Republic out of the agreement and El Salvador and Nicaragua as well. She urged unity among all Dominicans to deal with the situation. The news that the U.S. government is studying the expulsion of the Dominican Republic from the CAFTA DR should move all sectors of the nation to design a plan that averts a measure like that which will affect us all. 
tweeted the legislator of the opposition party citing the Miami-based El Nuevo Herald. So there's one thing. See? See what I'm saying? Somebody, I tw- that was my first initial thinking, is that there had to be something that has, cha- if, 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 you know, that has changed since Trump's been in office. And knowing what we've already seen, what he's done with China and, you know, and all that stuff. Let's see what else, if we can find anything else here on this search. Doing live research on air here, folks. Let's go back. Here's another one from 2017. Let's see what this is. Trump organization plots return to Dominican Republic sparking ethics concerns. When the Trump organization left the Dominican Republic after the economy crashed 10 years ago. Oh, shit. Motherfucker. Oh, God damn. Holy fuck. When the, oh, fuck. Man, I fucking knew it. See, I just hadn't had time, man. I've been busy. And I hadn't had time to research this stuff yet. I'm fucking doing it here on air, which is good because you get to fucking have the all ho ho moment when he fucking A. You see what I'm saying, man? We're figuring this shit out. The FBI ain't figured it out yet. Hmm. Listen, if I end up being right about this, somebody needs to cut me a check. That's all I'm saying. When the Trump organization left the Dominican Republic after the economy crashed 10 years ago, their plans for dozens of luxury estates and a Trump-branded development appeared to leave with them. Buyers who staked millions on lots for their dream homes were left empty-handed. The Trump team sued the developers alleging fraud and the billboards bearing the Trump name came down. Now there are signs the Trump brand may be returning to the Dominican Republic, and that has critics sounding alarms about the potential conflicts of interest for the sitting president of the United States. Motherfucker. So he was going to go set up a bunch of fucking luxury estates and hotels in there and pulled out on the deal, and now they're pissed. Man, I fucking knew it was some shit like that. I fucking knew it. So now they're targeting, somebody's targeting Americans as revenge because somebody probably in the upper echelons, the same people that are encouraging people to not have their fucking family members taken back. I'm fucking mad. I'm fucking pissed. And have their fucking family members taken back to America. They're encouraging them to get them fucking cremated on site so they can't do independent house. God damn, I'm getting fucking worked up about this shit now. Motherfucker. Oh. One of these, these, th- see, again, this is these people, the guys who uh, I can't even speak. I'm so fucking flustered. I'm sorry. You probably got the people that import the alcohol. Those are big money people. The guy, whoever the fucking representative was, that's trying to downplay it and all that. These guys probably were all invested in that shit and probably lost their fucking shirts when Trump pulled out. God damn. Well, if that's the case, then they're probably going to end up trying to cover up this whole Jelsamine thing. Because they sure as fuck don't want it to come out. I mean, you think it's going to make, make, uh, make them look bad? Oh, God damn. Fuck. It's just one constant fucking rabbit hole after another, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus Christ. We're going to have a new development with the Trump Organization of Apartments and Commercial Areas, a saleswoman told a man she thought was a potential buyer who was actually a global witness investigator. So you got people down there who are actually telling... So they sent an investigator undercover... This person, this woman told this, this person that, oh, don't worry, yeah, everything's good on good terms now, which is bullshit. They're still trying to sell people on these things, even though Trump pulled out. The saleswoman showed the investigator the beachfront location on a map of the sprawling Cap Canna Resort community. There it is. That's where it's all happening at. Where she believed a Trump-branded project was slated to be built, and a man identifying himself as her boss confirmed it was in the works. A new phase of the original deal between the Trumps and local developers. The Trump organization calls the Global Witness Report completely false. 
maintaining that it has no new development deals in the works and insists talks with Dominican developers has been free, infrequent. In 2007, the company entered into a license agreement with a local developer for a multi-component real estate development project to be built over several years, the company said in a statement, though there have been some discussions about starting the next phase of development, there are no plans in place at this time. An executive at the Trump Organization told ABC News that the company's original 2007 agreement had always envisioned their return to build a beachfront hotel and condominium project. This was all contemplated from day one, said the executive who asked to remain anonymous because he was not authorized to discuss the deal publicly. The potential for conflicts of interest is a unique issue that confronted Trump even before he took office as the first president in years who came into office with vast global business empire with many deals in the works and without any agreement to place that business into a blind trust. His business is run by his adult children and their successes and failures have the potential to impact his personal blah, 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 blah. Well, God damn. Slap my ass and call me Sally. Look at that, folks. Trump pulled out on a deal with him that probably cost that the people there millions. And now they're getting revenge by targeting fucking American citizens with an undetectable gelsamine poison to get re- man holy fucking shit y'all i'm my hair is standing on end right now i got to be honest with you this is fucking freaking me out i mean i don't know that anybody else has figured this out yet Let's see if I can find anything else. God damn. Oh, what else? Trump wants to end birthright citizenship. In the U.S., the Dominican Republic should serve as a warning of the crisis that could occur if that happens. What else? Let me, let me, I'm going to keep looking here, see if I can find anything else. Um, that's really all I see as far as... Um, Trump and... Man, that's huge. Well, you can bet that uh, they don't want that correlation being made. Shit, I'm kind of scared that I'm <laughs> I'm kind of scared that I made it now, motherfucker. Wow. See, I had a hunch. I had a hunch. That's why I said that earlier. You know, somebody should look into it. And then I said, well, fuck it. I'll, I'll look into it right here while we're on the air. Holy shit. I'm I, I'm I'm in shock. This is fucking crazy. That makes total sense. It'd be happening at those resorts because the people that own those resorts there that are there now would be the same people that were investing in these new resorts that Trump was bringing. And when he pulled out, he cost these motherfuckers millions, maybe even potentially billions in long-term revenue from tourists. I was wondering, I was, you know, because I just, I hadn't heard anything. If there'd been any, you know, we know about the stuff that he's doing with. Uh, didn't that, uh, and also another strange thing is too, didn't that, the baseball player, David Ortiz, didn't he get shot? Wasn't he in the Dominican Republic too when, when that happened? Didn't he, he's, they tried, somebody tried to assassinate him last week. That ha- That was in the Dominican Republic too, wasn't it? Hmm. Man, oh man. The plot just continues to thicken, doesn't it? Well, listen, they're they're either they're either going to have to admit to this. I don't know. I I can't tell you what's going to happen with this. I don't know. You can bet your bottom dollar Trump doesn't want 
it's not in Trump's best interest as we're approaching the new election cycle for them to be any, you know, any sort of uh, even suspicion that him pulling out of this real estate deal. God damn. God damn. <sighs> Fuck, man. I'm, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm in shock. I, I, I kind of wish I would have researched this all on the, off air now because I'm, I'm, I'm literally in shock. It, this all makes total fucking sense now. I knew this had to be somebody, you know, with connections and knowledge. Somebody, you just couldn't, you know, some rando. I mean, it's, it's possible, you know, it's possible that something like that you get, you know, every once in a while you do get one of those crazy Walter White, you know, genius, mad genius, crazy motherfuckers. You know, that happens. That are serial, serial killers and whatnot, but I don't know, just something, uh, you know what I'm saying, man, that, that, you know how you get that gut feeling? Something in my gut told me that that wasn't what it was. That it was something deeper than that. Because this is a very sophisticated poison to use, you know, to make people, to make it look like people are dying. You know, if you wanted to kill people, you want to get revenge on America, start killing off American citizens or revenge for Trump pulling out of this multi-million dollar real estate deal, which he wanted to do it in a way that would make the deaths look natural and do it in a way that it couldn't be traced back to anybody, there, there's not a better way to do it. There is not a better way to do it. And then, not only that, you mix it in with the pesticides. Hey, all the hotel... Then again, Because, again, I was thinking before, well, maybe this is a serial killer that works at the hotel and has access to rooms, but this happened on multiple resorts that, you know... You wouldn't have had somebody that would be able to have access to all the rooms and then get in there and get all the rooms to do it. It would have to be something that was mixed in by someone with somebody that was going to go in and do, you know, whoever the uh, the maintenance workers and stuff are that go in and spray the pesticides and stuff. Somebody put it in that, and that explains why it happened across all these different resorts. They're probably going there spraying the bottles around the mini bar, you know, and then... You pour that into a cup or, you know, you drink it. It's enough to get in there. Doesn't take much of that stuff, man. Doesn't take much. And probably some of the people had a, a smaller amount of exposure to it. And are the ones that got sick and, and haven't died. And then others that got a bigger dose. Man, this is some shit. I don't know. I don't. I got to be honest with you, folks. I don't feel optimistic that we're going to get to the bottom of this. If, if, if some people can get some independent toxicological examinations done and looking specifically for these gelsamine alkaloids, that could break the whole thing open. But if there starts to become, they're going to want to shut people up if this starts to come out and it starts to, you know, people start figuring out that this is retaliation for Trump's real estate deal he pulled out of. It ain't going to be good. They're not going to want that to come out. And they aren't going to give a fuck how many people die from it. They'll just say, oh, it was, you know, like they were saying before, the fake alcohol, bootleg alcohol, whatever, man. I, I'm, spe I, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. I, again, I had a fucking sneaking. So I was thinking, what would be the reason? You know, because that's a worldwide travel destination. But all the people that have died so far have only been Americans. So what would be the reason? And that was my thing. Well, why would somebody randomly be targeting Americans? Okay, you could go, okay, well, you just got a random sicko who doesn't like Americans because he lives in a fucking third world country or whatever. I don't know. You know, maybe he's jealous. Maybe, you know, no, no, this is deeper than that. And that's why the officials there in the Dominican Republic are being complicit with this. That's why they're encouraging people to have their family members cremated on site. 
and not sit back, man. I think I cracked this motherfucker wide open, y'all. Listen, I, I hope it comes out. They, they don't have anything to gain by covering this up. You know, so what? Trump pulled out of a real estate deal. I, that didn't happen while, while he was in office, I don't think. That's exactly what this is, though. There's, there can't be anything else. That was a big deal, man. We're talking multi-millions of dollars. Trump branded casinos, all that. He pulls out. People, these motherfuckers lost their shirts on that shit. So it would make sense that they would be specifically targeting Americans as revenge. Here's another one. Let's see what this says. Um, the Griff continues. Trump organization returns to the Dominican Republic, even though that last article said, okay, you know, that's probably false. Yeah, this is pretty much the same thing I read before, just a different uh, article about it. There have been signs the Dominican Republic has sought to influence the Trump administration in a range of areas. Just weeks after the inauguration and Eric Trump's visit to the, Amer to the Dominican Republic, the Dominican government hired a Washington, D.C. lobbying firm for the first time since 2007. According to Justice Department filings reviewed by ABC News, the office of the Dominican president signed a $1.2 million contract with lobbyist Brian Ballard, who had previously represented Trump and has been described in Politico as, quote, a closer to the president than perhaps any other lobbyist in town. The lobbyist pledged to advise, counsel, and assist the Dominican president in communications with government officials. While it is not illegal for Trump to run a private business while in office, cabinet members and senior administration officials are required by law to fully divest from any private financial interests that may intersect with their professional duties, the vice president and president of the United States are exempt from these rules. The Trump organization's business in the Dominican Republic has also spurned questions about the relationship between the U.S. president and Dominican officials. In particular, questions have arisen over whether Dominican officials changed rules so that buildings could be constructed higher to benefit a Trump company project, which could be a potential violation of the U.S. Constitution's emoluments clause. Last year, the president's daughter, Ivanka Trump, and her husband, fellow White House senior advisor Jared Kushner, spent a weekend visiting a luxury hotel in Dominican Republic. It's unclear whether they vi their visit was related to the real estate project. Well, you know it was. It's estimated to have cost U.S. taxpayers almost $60,000 in security costs. Motherfucker. Oh, holy shit, folks. God damn. This is absolutely insane. Uh, I, I that that seals it for me. I don't I don't need any more convincing. I think we've more hundred percent solved this. This is this this is nuts, and it uh, doesn't make me very confident that uh, we're going to get the truth about this. Holy shit. I, 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 I'm stunned. I, I'm just absolutely stunned. But, you know, this is my job, man. It's what I do. This is, this is exactly the kind of shit that, you know, I was put here to do. Is expose this kind of shit. I'm sure there'll be a lot of other people, you know, a lot of people steal from me all the time. It's whatever. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people coming out with the Jelsamine thing now claiming they came out with it first, but, you know, you heard it here first, folks. Um, Folks, we've only got 75 bucks in this month. And uh, we got to keep the electric and the lights on. We uh, we didn't reach our goal last week. We got to have three hundred bucks in here, ASAP. So please, 
hit up the contribution page, which you'll find in the uh, comment section of this video and also the information section of the video. You'll also find that at our Facebook pages, the Global Reality Radio Network Facebook page and the Josh Reese Homemaker Talk Show Host Explorer page. Hit up the download shop, get down all my films, the, the audio books, all that stuff. That supports our work as too. You can get the new uh, complete box that has all my work in it for 175 bucks. Whatever you do, please support my work. Um, we're, we're, we, I mean, we're already in the 20th of this month. We only gotten 75 bucks and that's just, that's not going to cut it. And, uh, I got to keep this stuff up and running. I got to keep going and I got to keep my work alive. We got to keep these bills paid so I can continue to expose shit like this folks stuff. You're just not going to get anywhere else because everybody else is bought and paid for and paid off and has sponsors and they're afraid of losing their sponsors. And God damn it, I'm so glad I made that decision 10 years ago to not have sponsors and stuff like that so I don't have to be beholden to any of this stuff, you know, worry about whether or not if I talk about something like this, somebody's going to pull my funding and, you know, going to be out of business. But none of this is possible without you and your support, and we need it right now. I'll be back tomorrow with more. I love you guys. Take care.